Hey everyone, welcome back to Pajama Crafts where I do crafts in my pajamas. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. Welcome and if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I have three DIYs for you guys that are uh, thrift flips and one Dollar Tree DIY and I'm also showing you how we installed our industrial shelving. So these pipe pieces actually came from Amazon. I will try to link those in the description and they were super easy to install because you could unscrew the pipe and then you see how my husband is just drilling in or screwing in um, the pieces. I don't know any technical terms for this. It's not like the real like uh, iron or whatever it's called. They're like they're still I think they're steel. Anyway, super easy to install. You can just uh, screw that piece right in. And then we went to Home Depot and we got one long piece of wood, which was enough for three shelves in the space that we were doing. And they cut it down for us there on their big saw. You just have to ask them to cut it for you. And then I went ahead and sanded them down. And then I decided to stain them with a little bit of... Um, just a stain that makes it look a little bit more weathered and Brie was running around outside with me doing some chalk that day. All I did was just stain these with a blue paper towel from the automotive section in Walmart. I like to use those because they're really thick and they don't usually leave too much residue as long as you get a new one after a little bit when you see that it's kind of starting to fall apart from all the liquid. And then, um, yeah, I just let these dry and we just set them right on top of the uh, pipes where we had them. And I think they're beautiful just as is like that. Uh, the piping did come with some little pieces that you could screw the boards in. Some like little loopy thingies. Um, but I didn't feel like those were necessary. So we just went ahead and left it just like this. Um, we, we just used a tape measure to measure the exact spot that we wanted the shelves and then we went ahead and just did them one foot apart. I would maybe add a little bit more space between if I was doing it again just because I can only put somewhat smaller things on the shelves. So when you're sitting in the living room this is a nook to the left of the couch. It's just a really weird space in our house. I guess I should have shown the whole area but anyway it's just a really strange nook space in the living room and so I didn't know what to do with it and so I thought adding shelves would be super pretty and I could decorate them for each season and then um, just kind of fills up that awkward space. So I have three DIYs that I did to go on these shelves and then I do have three different looks that I did on the shelves um, so that you guys can have a few because, different like, ideas. The detail on the frame was so so pretty. And then so W does not mean anything for, to me, so um, we will just go ahead and DIY the inside part. Wow. <laughs> so cold. So cold? Yeah. This was $3.99, and um, I just thought it was really pretty, like the shape and everything. I'm not going to leave the color. I'm going to go ahead and paint it. And distress it and everything but we're putting some new shelves in our living room soon and I thought that'd be really pretty on the shelf. So I actually lost some of the footage from this first DIY but that's why I inserted what it looked like in the beginning. So I just did two coats of the white Waverly chalk paint on this first and then I mixed a little bit of a darker gray color with white to get the lighter gray that I liked and went ahead and just dry brush that all over this thing and I think it turned out really really pretty. I knew exactly where I wanted to put it when I saw it at Goodwill so I just grabbed it right up and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it that I wanted it for my shelves. I was really hoping to find something similar to this um, and I was so happy to find it at Goodwill and not have to get it from like Hobby Lobby or something because it was really inexpensive and super easy to DIY.
Next, I have this sign I found at Goodwill, and it was originally from Kirkland's, and then I found out that, um, or one of you told me that sometimes the bigger stores like Kirkland's will donate brand new items to Goodwill, and then they resell them, so that's probably why it was there brand new. Anyway, in either case, I absolutely love the scallop detailing on this and I knew that I wanted to use it for my shelves or in my bathroom and I might change it up. But like I said, the W means nothing to me, so I did go ahead and paint over it with some white Waverly chalk paint. And uh, I did two coats on here and then I decided I wanted to distress it a little bit just so it looked a little bit more cohesive with the seat or with the frame but then when I did it I didn't like how it looked so I went ahead and let Brie just paint on it a little bit because she really wanted to help me paint which was so cute I love her cute little hands anyway she always wants to help mommy so I let her go ahead and just paint on there because I really wasn't liking how it was coming out anyway so once she was all done and the paint had dried I went ahead and went over it one more time um, with the white Waverly chalk paint I did let a little bit of that gray show through I think it was just a little too thick on there for me and so once I got it the way that I liked I went ahead and made a stencil with my Cricut with some contact paper from Walmart it's super simple you just do reverse weeding so you take out the pieces that you want to paint instead of the ones that you want to leave if that makes sense and so I just weeded that out it <laughs> it was a little uh, bubbled as you can see I didn't get the piece completely smoothed out and so that was my fault and it was really hard to weed the last flower and so I messed up and I lost some pieces and I was getting super frustrated so I just decided to leave that flower off and wasn't even worried about it so once I got the part weeded that I needed that rhymed um, then I went ahead and just transferred this onto my project with some clear contact paper from Walmart and um, then I just painted over it with some ink Waverly chalk paint. I kind of wish that I used some gray instead. Uh, I think that might have looked a little better with the frame but I still think it came out cute and then I just distressed it a little bit with um, some white Waverly chalk paint like I just went over the flowers a little bit so they wouldn't be such a huge contrast but as you can see this is some really small delicate pieces and I was struggling so hard so I just showed a little bit of it and then I just skipped to the end for you guys so you don't have to watch me in pain <laughs> but I know there is a video on my channel showing you guys how I make these contact paper stencils but that was using Dollar Tree contact paper and I don't use the Dollar Tree contact paper anymore for my stencils just because it tends to leave a sticky residue on my projects and I don't like that so I do use the Walmart contact paper it works so much better in my opinion and is super affordable it's like five dollars for a huge roll that lasts me forever so I would definitely do that if you're going to go this route with the contact paper stencil. Walmart is your best bet, in my opinion. Now I'm just using an old gift card to smooth this out so that I make sure I don't have any bubbles when I have the final uh, picture on there. And then you can see how the last uh, flower was a little bit messed up. And so I just went ahead and didn't even paint that one. You guys ask me sometimes some tips for stenciling, whether you're using a contact paper sticky stencil like this one or just a regular stencil, I would suggest taping it down and you can go over top. I have these flat foam brushes from Walmart and I just stipple the paint on, which just means that you bounce the brush up and down instead of 
uh, swiping side to side, if that makes sense, so that it doesn't leak underneath your stencil and bleed through. And then also, another way to do it, if you don't want to get your stencil all messy, if it's not a disposable one like this one, you can go ahead and just trace an outline with a paint marker and then paint inside the lines or just color inside the lines with your paint marker. That's a super easy way to do it. That's how I used to do it all the time before I got my Cricut. Then I just went ahead and weeded everything back out. I think the picture is very pretty, but as you can see, it's just a little bit too much of a contrast for me. So I did go ahead and go back over with some white chalk paint, like I said, and just kind of whitewashed it a little bit. And I think that made it a lot prettier, but also, like I said, I kind of wish I did light gray. I may end up painting over this and doing that later, but this was just a quick project that I wanted to show you guys kind of some options for um, styling the shelves. So for this third DIY, this was from Dollar Tree, and I did have the footage of me painting it white, and I don't know, I guess I deleted that with the other part, but anyway, um, it's just one of those jars from Dollar Tree. It comes with a lid, but I just went ahead and took that off. I gave it two coats, or just one actually, of the white Waverly chalk paint, and then I dry brushed some gray paint onto it. And I had this tassel that I had made a long time ago that came off of one of my other projects. And I just went ahead and tied that on there. And then we have these little wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. I tied that on as well and added a bead. At first I thought I was going to add three, but I didn't like how that looked with the tassel. If you were doing it just with the little cutout, I think that would be so pretty with like a few different beads. And hanging off of there but since I added the tassel as well is just too much so I went ahead and took those two back off and just left one bead and these beads are from Amazon I got them a while back to do some DIYs for my wedding but Amazon is a really good deal if you're looking for a lot of beads for a good price then I just went ahead and wrapped a little bit more twine around the top of the jar and tied it. And that's all I did for that one. And I think it just came out so, so pretty. So here you see the first DIY that we did from Goodwill. And I just love the detail on this. I think it turned out so pretty. I have this little concrete pot from Walmart with some greenery from Walmart. A DIY sign that I made, I will leave link below if I can find it, and some letters from Hobby Lobby, and then I have this little planter from Hobby Lobby with some spring florals from Michaels, and a little yogurt jar that I DIY'd this lantern from Goodwill. And then next we have our DIY sign we did, and the little Dollar Tree jar. And then I have this beautiful little wheelbarrow that Zach got me from Target a long time ago with some spring florals from Michaels in there. So for the next look, this is the Shabby Chic Spring look. I have some little pots that I DIY'd from 
Dollar Tree just p dry brushed a little bit of paint on there. That same little planter from Hobby Lobby. And then this vase is from Goodwill with some Michaels florals. I have the flower wand that I made for Brie for our wedding. This Dollar Tree DIY bird's nest that I did in a recent video. And then here are some more of my wedding florals in a box from Hobby Lobby. And that little yogurt jar DIY that I did a long time ago. On the next shelf, we have the galvanized letters from Hobby Lobby. The O flower part is also from Hobby Lobby. And then I have this big, beautiful spring floral from Michaels. Some more of my wedding flowers. And this was a recent Dollar Tree DIY I did with the succulent planter. That same lantern from Goodwill. And then I have this uh, DIY wreath that I did recently. And a Dollar Tree vase, little bird that I got at Goodwill a long time ago, and the same wheelbarrow. So I think that's a really pretty look for spring. And then next we have the Easter shelves I did. I absolutely love these. So for the Easter look, I kind of filled up the shelves completely. This might not be everyone's look and that's why I gave several different options. So in the Hobby Lobby planter, I have some spring florals from Michaels, including the egg picks. And then this DIY egg I made a long time ago from Dollar Tree. We have this recent DIY sign I did. I'll try to link everything down below if I can find it all. And because most of these are DIYs that I've done in the past, we have a cross and a bunny trail sign. This was one of my first DIYs I ever did on my channel. Probably like the third or fourth video I ever did. I'm not sure. And then again, one of those little yogurt jars. We have my bunny mailbox DIY with the little shabby chic eggs. Some wooden eggs from Target Dollar Spot in a basket from Hobby Lobby. Then I have my little bunny DIY. I added some more of the shabby chic eggs along the home sign. My same Dollar Tree DIY birdhouse and a bowl that I just painted. A little bunny I added some music paper to. We got some Dollar Tree carrots. The concrete planter from Walmart with some Walmart lavender in there. That same vase from Goodwill and my Goodwill lantern. Then I have this carrot bag that I DIY'd. I have this DIY lavender wreath up here on some wood. I don't know. A little bunny I DIY'd. Another bunny trail sign and some music eggs along with the wheelbarrow and the Michaels florals. Well, what happened? I think this came out so it pretty. Spilled. It was spilled. It spilled? Yeah. Looked like you poured it right out. Yeah. That's what happened. <laughs> That's what happened? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Wow. What? Remember, put. Oh, there you did it. Put it close to your mouth, remember? There you go. I did bubbles. Yeah. Wow. We had the bubbles. That was lots of them. That was a good one. Good job. You'll have to let me know down below which style of the shelves was your favorite. If you made it to the end of this video, leave a carrot emoji down below so that I know. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like these. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.